orthomarketing.com. 360 degree digital marketing solutions for your practice. Hello, everybody in podcast land. This is Dean Steinman, president of Ortho Marketing, and we are back with another podcast for you. And I'm super stoked to have with me Jill Allen. Jill Allen is a orthodontic consultant to the stars in <laughs> located in lovely Colorado. And how are you today, Jill? Uh, Dean, I'm doing wonderful. And it's actually a, a beautiful post snow day here in Colorado. So it is bluebird skies and snow all over everything. So it looks oh, great out you. here. Yeah. Good, good powder. Yes, it is a good powder day if, if we were up in the mountains. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Beautiful. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about um, a huge issue that practices are facing today um, that you and I both are having problems with, and, and almost every practice out there is having this, the same problem, and that is um, the ability to schedule appointments on your website to be able to have your website interact with your practice management program and make it simple for people. So let's kind of talk a little bit about that and the things that you're seeing from your clients and what I'm seeing and and how can practices get over this hurdle? Um, You know, we're in a world now where everything should be digital, virtual, and be able to be done on a, on a website. And, you know, I tra- we track everything on websites and, and we know that um, more than 70% of people who go to an orthodontics website are going when the practice is closed. They're going before work, they're going lunchtime, or they're going in the, in, at night. So most, and also people don't want to pick up the phone and call and talk anymore. So they want to be able to go to a website, like you would say, if you wanted to, you know, make a reservation at a restaurant, you don't want to call them. You just want to go on the website and pick, pick a time. Um, this, it, we've been finding this as a big issue at here at Ortho Marketing. And, you know, tell me a little bit about what you found for, for some of your clients and the uphill battle that they're facing or once they do see if they an answer downhill <laughs> slope for it. Sure. Yeah, no, for sure. I think, I think this is a, um, a big thing that we should be talking about. And I think that many, many practices, especially, you know, I work a lot in that startup realm and, you know, my eight years and less doctors. I mean, I just feel like this is a big issue that we're all dealing with. And I think it stems from just ease of access. And, you know, I think, you know, just being in the last, you know, six months with COVID here, um, you know, patients are looking for ways to communicate with us and, you know, get in, get an appointment, whether it's virtual or in person. And, you know, I just, I really feel like we've got some pretty big obstacles right now in making that ease of access for patients. And, you know, some of the things that I'm really seeing is, you know, should a doctor want to have, you know, an opportunity for a patient to not just chat with them, but to actually go in my own time, schedule an appointment. It seems like there are just so many hoops that patients have to jump through. And then the flip side of it is, how many hoops there are for the doctors, the practices to be able to set it up to get these appointments scheduled. So we're talking lots of third party, um, you know, um, tools that have to be put in place. And, you know, employees are having to toggle between two or three different, you know, um, tools to help them schedule appointments. And, you know, I, I, I just feel like, you know, I, I wish if our uh, some of our big uh, management companies could hear us talking today, you know, that they would just make that ease of access better so that, you know, doctors and, you know, the website, whoever's hosting their website, it, we could just make it an easier process to get patients into the practice to say yes to treatment. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, yeah, you have to, you know, it's, it's in, especially as you mentioned in this, in this COVID world, people still want to get the smile that they want, but they don't want to leave their house as much as possible, and especially, you know, yeah. go, you know, take that to take the mask off. So, um, you know, we've found a real big boom for many of our clients, the ability to do virtual consults using new technologies and what have you. But so in my eyes, there's, there's really like four main steps when it comes to, um, an, patient's journey 
one is the first is to actually do a, a consult okay mm-hmm. to see yes if, you know if this is a great match for you if you if you could afford it and, and and what have you um then from there yeah okay you do have to then go into the office to get your exam and and you know get your, your x-rays and what have you then after that it's ongoing maintenance yes. and there are a lot of technologies yep. out there like dental monitoring and and that are really great and make it so you don't have to come back to the office as, mm-hmm. as much as you used to. Um, I'm in my Invisalign journey right now. I'm on my fourth tray and we're, um, I have a video blog about it, a vlog as they call it. And it's pretty oh, fun. And my, my daughter it. is, yeah. So if you go on author marketing, a YouTube channel, you'll, uh, you'll, you'll be able to watch my journey. Um, but my daughter, who's, who's actually been doing the videoing for me, who saw Dr. Glazer, who's doing, who's doing my work, a little pitch for, for Dr. Barry Glazer right now. Um, so if yeah. anybody is an orthodontist, there's the, the, the king of the kings. <laughs> but, you know, she was pretty, she was like, Dad, you have, they have this technology that you don't have to come back for six months? I had to come back, it seems like, every every two, three, four weeks. <laughs> you know, yeah. so there, there are great programs out there. But the main issue is how do we get the patients to, or prospective patients to, interact with the practice to get in for their their consult because a lot of people don't do virtual and they still want to be able to be seen by the orthodontist and if you have to fill out a form and then wait for somebody to get back to you and then try to find the right time that matches for you and them there's a good chance that the practice is going to lose that potential lead and go to somebody else you know think about it if you're looking for a plumber and you need to speak to a plumber you have to, you have to fill out a form on the website and you don't hear back from the plumber for an hour or so you're gonna call another plumber yep. and the same thing yep. with uh, you know on, on, you know for you know for orthodontics if you see um you go to a website and you're interested and if the if the practice does not get back to somebody within one hour um the odds drop 400 percent of of getting that patient in 400 percent so how do you cap? How do you do that? And, you know, that's been the biggest, you know, bane of my existence from a marketing standpoint is how do we close that gap? And mm-hmm. there are, you know, several players out there and they won't let you go into their program. I don't blame them. It's, a, you know, practice management software is a very particular and they don't want anybody to be able to put their third party, you know, programs onto the, into their software. But how do they play nice? And that's what we're trying yeah. to figure out. You know, yeah, and yeah, for sure. Be done, you know, and so what yeah. kind of things have you seen? You know, because we don't like to put on too many different, you know, plugins or too many different things on the site because that would just slow the site down. So the more, you know, third party options we have to put on the site, the 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 the, the worse the site's going to perform. Hence, Google is going to push it down in their rankings because it'll be slow or it'll be clunky mm-hmm. or it won't have a good experience there. So it's got to be light and, and airy. So what have you, you know, what do you, what, <laughs> what kind of options you think or you, you've seen or, or available? <laughs> well, you know, indeed, I think, I think this is the hard part is I just don't feel like we've had a company that has been able to truly work that out. Um, and interface with all the different operating systems that are out there. You know, we may have a company that's been able to work it out with one, but not everybody's on that one software. And, you know, and, and I get that we've got the challenges of, you know, we may have one or two different consult rooms and, you know, it, it's in a different appointment code that's being scheduled in. And there's, you know, there, there's a lot of back end programming that, you know, and I'm not a programmer, so I don't know exactly how this all works. But, you know, I, I get that it's not just as easy as if somebody wanted to schedule, a, you know, a consultation with me. And I plug it into my Calendly and my Calendly says, oh, you know, here's all of Jill's time, schedule an appointment with her. That would be really simple. But I think, you know, what I am seeing is people trying to, you know, kind of do the hybrid of a Calendly or, um, you know, a go-to meeting or, you know, these different things that allow a patient to go on, go into a, 
generic um, calendar that a doctor or a team has generically set appointments up that they can schedule into. But the hard part is there's the interface isn't there. And so, you know, what we run into is if somebody calls into the office and takes the exact same time that somebody who's online is scheduling for, oh, you're double booked. Now what are you going to do? And so I just, I, exactly. I really, I really don't feel like we have found um, you know, that, that answer yet. Um, and I think that, you know, we're really being pushed, you know, even more so to, to, um, to find that because I think that is what patients want. I think we want ease of access and, you know, we're seeing this in so many other industries. Um, I, I just feel like we're a little behind the times, um, you know, as progressive as we are, I think we're a little behind the times in this area. This podcast is brought to you by Presentation Multimedia. Presentation Multimedia is a full-service digital marketing agency providing website design, social media management, search engine optimization, digital advertising, and more. For more information, visit presentationmultimedia.com. And, you know, the, you know, and a lot of industries like, you know, for example, restaurants, there, there's, there's, there are a couple of players that let people order, order in for takeout and um, because you can't go into a restaurant now or a lot of, in a lot of places. So mm -hmm. um, there are a lot of delivery services and there's two or three main players in the, in that industry and other ones are, are, are coming aboard as well. In ours, there are a lot of players and there are, you know, more than two or three um, big guys that, that, that control the purse strings and control what's happening. And, and that software really runs your office. So, um, you know, if there was one or two, no worries, but this, but there's 15, 20 different ones across right. the board, right. you know, which right. there are a couple more that are, that are more prominent than others, but at the same time, there's a lot out there and, and most of them won't let you do it. And the idea that you said is have a, a secondary calendar in place. Well, that's great, but you know, a practice is going to say, my staff's too busy. They're not going to be able to, to do multi, you know, do two things at once and blah, blah, blah. And, and the, and the staff is not, I don't blame them. They're busy and they're working hard and it's a little stressful now. So the, if you can be more efficient and effective without having to do double the work, why not? Um, yeah. You know, yeah. So, you know, and it, I, and I think world, about, Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, 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 go ahead. No, I was just saying, you know, and I think about, you know, when a doctor is, you know, paying, you know, to have marketing done for them and just all of those potential missed opportunities, you know, by having that middleman in the place, like you said, filling out the form to wait on the employee to call, you know, the patient back. And, you know, if they don't hear, you know, maybe it's a busy day, maybe it's a day where everybody is out that day, and they got to wait till Monday when everyone comes back in. You know, I just, I just feel like there's so many obstacles that are still in place, you know, that again, I feel like go back to where we're just not keeping up like we should to make ease of access for our patients. Um, and, you know, especially when you're working with marketing companies that are driving all these patients, you know, your way and they're communicating with you the way they want to be communicated with online, we should have a better way to get them, you know, to, to open up those doors to get them onto our schedules. Has to be, you know, and you know, and guys, if if for some reason that you know there is an extra step involved, and hopefully or two, but hopefully not, you have no choice. You have to do it. You have to adapt. You have to adapt, or somebody else will step up and take that extra step in that practice and give the patient the ability to to schedule and to follow up the way they want to be, and you're going to lose them. It's it's, it's that simple. So you know. You know, I'm going to you know put a plea out there today, and anybody who's listening, call up your 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 rep at your, at your you know software program, and ask them if they have the ability to um, put a widget on a website or help you with 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 scheduling and see what they say, and um, that would be a, a game changer. The more people that can just pick pick up the phone or email and just ask about this, the, the more it'll it'll happen. Yes. Um, you know, if people start complaining, you know, they will listen. And that's that's important. And this is guys, this this is hundreds of thousands of dollars at stake here. We're not talking about about pennies, hundreds of thousands of dollars that, that are potentially in your pocket that are not because patients don't have the ability to 
go do orthodontics on their time. Okay, we're in a world that, that now is virtual. We're virtual orthodontics, virtual, um, you know, teledentistry, telemedicine. Um, so you need to be, be able to have your practice running on the same program that everybody else is. So yeah. um, that's, that's our, our my plea for today is to, is, when, <laughs> when you hear this, just to ask your rep, ask the company if they, if they can do so. And if they can't, ask them why. <laughs> and if they can, ask them, how can we, how can we do it for our, for our website? Um, it, it's, it'll be a game changer. Guaranteed. Yeah. You'll, you'll see it, you know? Um, so, you know, Jill, in a, in a perfect world, how would, how would you see this working as far as, um, you know, say they do open up their, their, their floodgates and they do let you go on it, um, and, and, and put a widget. How would, how would that, how would you, you know, talk to your, your clients and the practices and what would you recommend for them to do to, to, um, adapt ASAP to this? Right, right. So, I mean, I mean, what, what I would see is, you know, a widget that is directly right on their website or a widget that can be used through, you know, maybe even some social media marketing where, you know, they can click right onto that. It takes them directly into the practices software. They're able to fill out the basic information needed to schedule an appointment. This is not going to be give us your health history and give us your, you know, but just enough to get their name, their information into the schedule, I could foresee it, you know, on a, on a software side where maybe the new patient code that's being used is, um, you know, is being um, like, there, there's a new, new patient code. So we know it's coming in from the internet. And then, uh, you know, immediately the team is alerted when they get in, oh, we've had five new patient schedule directly from the website. There's probably going to be some different protocol that we have to do and put in place to get, you know, insurance scheduled or insurance checked and, you know, things mm-hmm. handled before the patient is either coming in for an in-person uh, exam and or um, getting set up for a virtual exam. But, you know, I, I just feel like, you know, if we could just something as simple as that widget to take that middleman out, allow the patient to have the immediate gratification of scheduling an appointment and knowing that they're on the books for us, um, I just, I, I just feel like that is such a game changer. And then, of course, you know, you got to work through the protocols in the office. But that, that's the way I would sure. see it working and working well. I, I, I agree wholeheartedly. The same exact thing. Just, you know, if if there's a way for you to come in and be able to look in your emails or look in your in your calendar and see an appointment that's that's, that's scheduled, it's a no brainer. Okay, because if, again, if somebody reaches out to you and you do not respond within a certain amount of time, they're going to contact somebody else, plain and simple. And can you yeah. afford to lose, you know, just think if you lose two of these a month, okay, that's $150,000 of business or potentially or so, just and two a month, and it's probably even more than that is, you know, depending upon the market you're in. So it's, it's a lot of numbers, guys. It's a lot, it's, uh, you know, a lot of, of, of money there available. But if you just ask the right questions and ask, and ask the, the protocol in place. Um, so, so with that said, um, Jill, wish you and your family a very happy Thanksgiving coming up. Aww, and everybody out there, you, the same thing you. and the holidays be safe. Thank you very much. Um, and Jill, a little quick plug. If somebody um, has any questions or wants to contact you, I want you to give your, your little infomercial there. Tell them about the Jill Allen Associates and um, and best way for people to contact you. Sure. So for me, the best way to get a hold of us is at our website. You can check us out at www.practiceresults with an S.com. And within our website is a widget that allows you to just jump right on and schedule a call with me. So if you want to find out more yes. about consulting services, that's um, just a great way to do it. And, um, you know, we work with primarily startups, doctors who've been in practice eight years or less. Um, we'll talk to anybody. doesn't mean we won't work with anybody, but that's kind of where our specialty is. Great. And, and what kind of services do you provide? How do you help a practice? What is, what do you, what's your sweet spot? What do you do? Sure. So, you know, definitely that startup realm. I help doctors who are thinking about opening up a practice, finding a location, going through the build out process all the way through once they get their doors open, 
uh, working with all the management systems and protocols that we need to put in place to grow a good, healthy uh, practice from ground up. We also focus a lot on working with doctors who are in that acquisition stage where maybe they have purchased a practice and they are brand new uh, owners to a business and just need some help making sure that they are getting the right systems in place for them, their business, their vision for their next 20 years uh, going forward. And then, of course, we also do work with existing practices. Um, we tend to work with a lot of docs on that eight years to retirement realm where maybe they know that they're going to be looking at getting um, ready to sell a practice and are looking to build up, get systems in place, get things um, just looking really good for somebody coming in to get top dollar when they're ready to sell their practice. Great, great. And um, once again, thanks so much, Jill. Any, anybody out there needs um, a, con a consultant from, from an early stage practice, please reach out to Jill. She's awesome. And guys, like, once again, I'm going to plead if you – have access to your um, your rep at your software company, ask them how they can help you. It will be important for the industry, important for you, and it'll make life so much easier across the board. So with that, again, thanks everybody for listening. Um, this is Dean Steinman from Ortho Marketing. Wish everybody a very happy and healthy holiday season. And can't wait for 2021 to get here already because it's been one crazy year. So uh, with that said, everybody, keep smiling and um, enjoy your, your family. All right. Be well, everybody. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Orthomarketing.com. 360-degree digital marketing solutions for your practice.